Wait a minute, did we just win the game? How did that just happen? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did we actually just win? This is not the first time this has happened to me where I just hop into a game for a benchmark and I win. Hey there, tech enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel where we bring you the latest and greatest in the world of tech. So today I have something that is actually not the latest and greatest at all, but it's an absolute gem of a budget workstation that can be turned into a beast of a gaming PC. We have the Dell Precision Workstation 3620. So this powerhouse of a machine is sure to blow you away with its impressive specs, unbeatable value for money, and amazing upgrade potential. And speaking of upgrade potential, we're gonna be upgrading it with a very inexpensive, but powerful discrete GPU as well. So without further ado, let's dive right in, right after a word from our sponsor. With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. You can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. So get rid of that Windows activation watermark and get your system activated today. It also works for Windows 11 as well. Check the links in the description. All right, the Dell Precision 3620. Now, I already covered this system and unboxed it after I bought it from eBay. And if you wanna see that video, go ahead and check this link up here for it, for it and uh, check the video out. But first things first, let's run through the specs of this machine again for those of you that missed that first video. So at the heart of this machine is the Intel Xeon E3 1270V5 processor clocked at 3.60 gigahertz. This processor is basically equivalent to an i5-6600 and offers you actually four cores and eight threads versus the four cores and four threads that an i5-6600 would normally offer you. But that's not all folks, our Dell Precision Workstation 3620 comes loaded with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2666 megahertz. And this baby offers the perfect combination for speed and capacity with a one terabyte hard disk drive for mass storage and a lightning fast 256 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD for your basically boot drive and all of your very fast applications that you want to be very, very snappy and responsive. So it's a very nice upgrade to the Optiplexes we're used to on this channel that are still stuck on the DDR3 platform with zero NVMe SSD support. Another welcome piece of hardware in this system is the 365 watt gold rated power supply. So this allows you to install a more powerful GPU to drive games and it even comes with a six pin PCIe connector. So many low power GPUs will be plug and play with this system, which is a very nice addition. Now, not only does this workstation deliver on performance, but also rocks a pretty sleek mini tower form factor that actually doesn't look horrible in my opinion and has plenty of IO so that you can connect all of your devices. The inside of the case also has ample space to add a discrete GPU uh, between nine and 10 inches of space to be exact where the PCIe slot is. So today we're actually gonna supercharge this workstation by adding an AMD RX 5700 graphics card into the mix. This powerful GPU boasts eight gigabytes of dedicated video memory, delivering those uh, stunning visuals and silky smooth gameplay, at least we hope so. So whether you're a gaming enthusiast or even a creative, the RX 5700 will offer you some amazing value for money. And I'll talk about that value here in a little bit later. So now just to go ahead and drive this whole point home and how awesome of value this is, let's go ahead and hop into some benchmarks that I recorded live on stream with all of you guys showcasing the gaming performance of this stellar combo. Okay guys, so we're gonna start this off with COD Modern Warfare 2 running at 1080p on the balanced preset. And so I ran this with FSR and other upscalers on, but it didn't really seem to matter in our situation because we are actually super highly CPU bound here. As you can see, if you look in the top left corner, uh, it's using a lot more of the CPU than the GPU, which it should not be doing in this game. And because of that, we're losing quite a few frames that we could be getting otherwise. So we're barely just about able to get 57 FPS in multiplayer. And then moving over to actual Warzone or DMZ on Almazra, yeah, you lose about 10 FPS here. So it's pretty consistent across the board of what you're gonna get here. Now, it's only this game. 
Just so don't worry, these benchmarks are gonna get better. And now moving it over to Overwatch 2 at 1080p high settings with FSR 1.0 on. As you can see, this game is very much more optimized than our last game. And we were able to just stay locked at 144 FPS here and actually play at a high refresh rate. So you could probably pump this a little higher if you wanted to, or you could even go for even better esports settings to get even higher FPS if your screen allows that. Um, but here we were able to max out the refresh rate of my screen Screen, and we were able to get some really great 1% and 0-1% lows as well. Now moving into a new benchmark I'm including in my benchmarks, the Far Cry 6 benchmark. And we're doing this at 1080p high settings with FSR 1.0 on quality. And here again, you can see we are a little bit CPU bound here. Not as crazy as COD, but still CPU bound nonetheless. But we were still able to get an average FPS of 76, which I think is pretty good. But this is really starting to make me wonder if maybe the i7 version of this CPU might be a better choice if you're someone looking to play much more recent games as it looks like they use a lot more CPU power than some of the older games we're going to test. And speaking of a little bit older games, we're talking about Apex Legends here. And now this game ran really, really well, and we were able to get ourselves an average FPS of about 123 over the course of this entire game. And this just goes to show that a game like this, where it's not very CPU dependent, you can look at the numbers right there, it's using a lot more of our GPU than our CPU, uh, you're going to end up getting a lot better FPS numbers, and it's going to play very, very smooth, just like it did here, with some pretty good 1% uh, lows and 0.1% lows. And honestly, if the numbers are a little bit weird there it's just because of maybe a hitch and a stutter here and there but still overall very smooth gameplay and speaking of smooth gameplay we next moved into cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p high preset this time with fsr 2.1 on balance and we were able to get ourselves an average fps of 77 across the built-in benchmark and the actual game which you'll see right about here and uh with one percent lows and 0.1 percent lows were actually not terrible and this offered just a really nice you know cinematic gaming experience for a game like this now what i like to see like you know in the hundreds somewhere yeah that'd be great but again you can see our cpu and gpu are just where they should be but it also uses a lot more cpu than you would think in this game so again a newer cpu would probably do a little bit better and next we got one of the most well optimized games that i've ever seen and this is doom eternal we're running a 1080p on their high preset and we were able to go ahead and rip and tear as much as we wanted and with all the explosions and all the gore happening here with, with getting an average FPS 183. Okay, and the 1% lows were still at 133, and you can see the 0.1% lows were at 24, and that is just because we had a random stutter somewhere, but throughout the entire run, this is the one of the most smooth gameplays of a game that you can get right now with a system like this. It was actually really, really awesome. And speaking of awesome, we now have one of my favorite games, Hogwarts Legacy, doing what I call the Castle Run benchmark. And now this is where I start on the outside of the castle, get on my broom, then fly into the castle and then run around through like the Great Hall area up to the, you know, um, the disappearing steps and all that inside the castle. So throughout that whole run between everything, we were able to average an FPS of about 82. And now you guys are going to say it. I know you are. If you guys play this game. Yes. When you go into the uh, the staircase and all that kind of stuff, you get really, really good FPS. But I think it's a great, you know, showing of what you're going to get average throughout the entire um, castle and we were able to run this at 1080p with high settings with no upscaler because I noticed the upscalers didn't really do much for you in the long run now I also went ahead and tested Hogsmeade because that is what really shows where the lowest point is gonna be and this run was no exception showing us just only about 50 average FPS throughout our run through Hogsmeade and sometimes it dipped even down to about 45 because this area is insanely CPU bound typically and you can see right there that we're hitting a bottleneck as soon as we get in here but a very surprising benchmark to me was Red Dead Redemption 2 and now we played this at 1080p on the fourth balanced preset whatever that is I think it's higher settings but uh, we were able to get an average of 85 FPS between the built-in benchmark and actual gameplay within the real game as you see right here uh, we were able to just walk through the game and it actually looks like the the numbers we're getting are really consistent throughout the built-in benchmark and the the game as we're actually seeing better FPS in the game itself which is pretty cool and it's 
really playable at that FPS and I, I honestly it surprised me based on our other games I thought this was going to be a lot more maybe CPU bound but it turned out that the GPU was doing a lot more work in this one and for our last benchmark with this setup we got Fortnite running at 1080p on the high preset with the super resolution set to balanced and we were able to average 90 FPS with 1% lows of 71 and 0.1% lows of 45 so I was able to have a very smooth gameplay experience here and yes if you were to play on the usual pro settings that everybody uses you could net yourself you know over 100 probably even the 120s or something like that maybe even more possibly depending on how you tweak it but either way very smooth gameplay and i was very happy with it all right guys so in conclusion the dell precision workstation 3620 paired with the amd rx 5700 is an absolute steal for anyone seeking top-notch performance without breaking the bank. Now let's talk about that incredible value that this combination brings to the table. So with the Dell Precision Workstation 3620 that I picked up, priced at just $170, tax included, from eBay, and the RX 5700 graphics card, I purchased that for $150 with tax included. So this build offers you some unbeatable bang for your buck right now, coming in at only $320. Yes, I'm dead serious. And now, you know, if you have a little bit extra money, something I would suggest is maybe picking up the 5700 XT model as they can be had for maybe just 10 or $20 more and you will see an F increase in FPS for sure with that combo as well. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me on this thrilling tech journey. And remember to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel with those notifications on for more exciting tech content and stay tuned for our next tech adventure like this one. But until then, happy computing and I'll see you guys later.